The, the question is that the motion be agreed to. I call the honourable member Grant Robertson. Mr Speaker, this bill is a desperate, flailing attempt by a government bereft of ideas of how to grow the economy. And the only idea they have is to sell off New Zealanders' future, sell off the assets built up by past generations for future generations, sell off our key infrastructure and sell off, Mr Speaker, what New Zealanders already own. That's it from this government, Mr Speaker. Sell, cut and hope. That's the extent of the economic strategy. But we can add one more word to that now. Sell, cut, hope and guess. Guess. Because that's the best the Minister of Finance can do, Mr Speaker, is guess at the benefit to New Zealanders. Well, the problem is New Zealanders don't buy it, Mr Speaker. New Zealanders already own these assets. Every day New Zealanders that Mr Ryle speaks of Everyday New Zealanders are worried about paying their power bills, not buying the power company. And the kind of everyday New Zealanders Mr Ryle's talking about might be the people he meets in the Northern Club. It's not the people in the Cosy Club. It's not the ordinary New Zealanders struggling to make ends meet, being told to buy back what they already own. Mr Speaker, this is short-sighted. It's a sugar-hit economic policy. And it's all very well for Mr Key to get unconditional love for Moonbeam, but he shouldn't be taking economic advice from him as well. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, Mr Speaker, this is without doubt the most short-sighted piece of economic policy we have seen in this House for a long, long time. Mr Speaker, mum and dad investors is a piece of double speak. There is no doubt in my mind that that phrase has been invented by this government to try to sell a policy to New Zealanders that New Zealanders know is the wrong thing to do for their future. There is no way this government can guarantee shares will stay in New Zealand control. We know from the experience of Contact Energy the number of shareholders within six months of Contact Energy being privatised fell by 35,000. There is no way this government can guarantee that New Zealanders will retain control of these assets. These shares will go overseas. New Zealanders will lose control of these assets. New Zealanders know that foreign control of their assets is the wrong thing to do. They have had the experience. The 1990s did teach them that, Mr Ryle, and they know that foreign control of our assets, foreign control of our core infrastructure, Mr Speaker, is bad for our economy and it's bad for everybody. But what about this as the time to sell these assets, Mr Speaker? Could there be a worse time to sell these assets? No wonder Bill English has to guess how much New Zealand might benefit from this because he's selling these assets into a world economy where he will get the worst possible price. It makes no economic sense, Mr Speaker. And what we don't know yet, Mr Speaker, is the cost of selling these assets. Who's benefiting from these sales? The lawyers, the finance companies, who's benefiting, Mr Speaker? They're the people who are benefiting from these sales. The mates of the National Party, Mr Speaker, not the everyday New Zealanders that Mr Ryle claims to be representing. As Mr Parker says, the 1% are the people who will benefit from this. The New Zealanders who will benefit from having these assets in their hands. Why not, Mr Speaker, have a government with a vision to actually use these assets to benefit New Zealanders, to develop these assets, to make sure that they actually work on our behalf instead of giving up and selling them off because that's the one idea they've got. And New Zealanders understand this, Mr Speaker. You don't sell the house to pay the mortgage. Or you don't sell half the house to pay the mortgage. Because what happens the next time there's a debt problem? What else do we sell? Do we sell the other half, Mr Speaker? This is no way to manage an economy. It is no way to develop infrastructure. And it's an insult to the intelligence of New Zealanders, Mr Speaker, for Mr Ryle to stand up and say, this is how we fund schools and hospitals. Going right back into the last century and beyond, governments have taken seriously their responsibility to provide schools and hospitals. They are a core part of a government's business. It is an insult, Mr Speaker, to this House and to New Zealanders to try to say to them, the only way you'll get those schools and hospitals is if we hock off the assets. That is an insult. This government must have more imagination and ability and actually know that they can keep these assets. They can keep these assets and have the quality schools and hospitals that they deserve. Mr Speaker, the Prime Minister told us there would be an elegant solution around the Section 9 debate. Well, the elegant solution, Mr Speaker, looks a little bit as elegant as Tony Ryle's shirt and tie combination today. 
It's a bit of a clash, Mr Speaker, because what's happened is we've got the old Section 9 and added on to the enders, but no one who's a private company will be responsible for that. So that means treaty principles apply to 51%, but not the other half. Half of the dam, but not the other half of the dam, Mr Speaker. How does that work? That's far from an elegant solution. And Mr Speaker, I call on the Māori Party in this House today to treat this issue for what it is. This is an issue of confidence. This is an issue of confidence. This is the major economic matter that they have to decide on in this term. And I challenge the Māori Party. They know this is wrong. They want to vote against it, but they want to stay inside the coalition. My challenge to them today is to have the courage of their principles and convictions and walk order, away. Order. Walk away today. Order. Member must not challenge the courage. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I also challenge Peter Dunn, because that's the vote. 61 to 60, Mr. Speaker. Peter Dunn's vote is the one that will carry this. And the people of Ohariu, they have, will tell this minister and this member time and time again over the next months, they don't want these assets sold. Mr. Dunn is the man who can stop this. He can make this the exclamation mark at the end of his political career. Make it worth something and say no to the sale of these assets. It's one vote, Mr Speaker. And if that side of the House are claiming a mandate, every single yeah. survey around yeah. asset sales says New Zealanders don't want them. 75% of people surveyed in the New Zealand Values Survey said they do not want assets sold. There is no mandate. Every member on that side of the House went to election meetings and they know what New Zealanders think. They know New Zealanders don't want these assets sold. What they want is a government that's actually got some vision to grow the economy instead of thinking that it's sell, cut, hope and guess because that's the best that they can do, Mr Speaker. The other thing we need to make sure that we're very clear on here is what else is lost in this bill. The social responsibility clauses that have guided state-owned enterprises are out the door. There will be no sense of that. And if New Zealanders know one thing, they know this. The one sure outcome of selling these assets will be that power prices will rise. That is the one sure outcome that power prices will rise. Mr Coleman's questioning that. Power prices will rise. That is the outcome of this. I don't care about whatever past record Mr Coleman wants to talk about. Will power prices rise? If he can guarantee they won't, he'll satisfy New Zealanders, but they know they will. They know that this will affect them in their hip pocket, but it will affect future generations. This is actually an issue of sovereignty, as Mr Ryle said, but he got it completely around the wrong way. The issue of sovereignty here is one about New Zealanders controlling our future. New Zealanders having an ability to control their own lives, not to see those poor assets sold off overseas. Mr Speaker, there will be a petition for a citizens initiated referendum on this matter and it will go around the country and I can guarantee every single member on the other side of the house that they will see people gathering these signatures and that referendum will occur and it will tell the National Party that New Zealanders do not support the sale of these assets. There is a core message in this today. That is that New Zealanders are proud of what has been built up in the past. They want to retain the ownership of their own future. They know that this is a sugar hit, a one-off hit for the economy that cannot be repeated, and that if we try to buy those assets back, it will cost us time and time again. The message from this side of the House is New Zealanders already own these assets, Mr Ryle. They're not yours to sell. I call the Honourable Order. I call the Honourable Minister, Dr Jonathan Coleman. Mr Speaker, that really wasn't a for the Labor leadership, uh, quite honestly, and I could see by the smiles